everybody. Happy Thursday. It is Thursday today instead of Friday. I'm going up to Waco tomorrow. So Facebook Friday is coming to you a day early. All right. I am hoping I'm in the right place and I'm going to show you guys why I was going to say welcome to crazy town. It is pretty crazy around here for sure. Uh, there's a, there's like multiple things happening right outside the window things happening in the house. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. I have a hard time focusing and, you know, doing what I'm supposed to do when there's all this stuff going on, craziness. Um, if you guys didn't see my post from earlier, our neighborhood is getting AT&T fiber internet, I don't know, something like that. It's been going on for months, I think maybe April or May. And our streets, I guess, are one of the very last streets to get this fiber. I know some of you have already got in your neighborhood, you've told me. Um, they come and without any notice, they just start drilling and digging in your yards. And they're laying wires that go from your yard over to across the street and back and forth. And they have dug holes in people's driveways there's been gas main leaks there's been people who had to evacuate <laughs> i mean it is crazy so i've just kind of been like oh you know like waiting 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 and so last night well it was right about five o'clock this thing pulls up in front of our house and which means i guess it's our turn so i'm going to show you guys we live in a cul-de-sac and so our front yard's real shallow you know, like our backyard goes deeper. It's kind of like in a pie shape. And so we're real close. And then this thing right here, see if you can see my finger. That thing right there is huge, huge. And over here on this side, which you can't see over here, there's like this giant drill that they drill down. And then over on that side of the house where you can't see, my other neighbors are getting a pool. And so there's people over there working concrete trucks all kinds of crazy there was a guy here earlier installing something in my car that my husband got me for my birthday my amazing housekeeper is here she usually comes on tuesday but she's here <laughs> so it's a little crazy um but you know what that's what that's it that's what we're gonna do because last week i wasn't live and tomorrow i'll be out of town so this is the day luckily that thing hasn't started yet with our luck, you know it's gonna start right now, right? <laughs> they're gonna show up and they're gonna start digging. So anyway, fair warning, but today might get a little weird and crazy. Um, hopefully not, but it will, probably. Um, I have some things to show you. Our projects take a little bit longer than normal. Well, I mean, I guess not n n longer than normal, but they're a little longer. So I wanna jump right into things. Let me make sure I have you guys your comments. Um, here, oh, my volume's on. Okay, there we go. First off, I want to see who has gotten their paper pumpkin. Okay, this has to be the cutest paper pumpkin kit in the history of paper pumpkin. You guys know I'm not really a kit person. I, you know, I like to make kits rather than do kits. Um, so I don't always do my paper pumpkins, but this one I ordered a bunch because I knew you guys were going to love it. Um, it comes like this, and um, inside is your normal kit. It makes, what, like, I think 12 treat things. They can be apples, they can be pumpkins, they can be, I guess, green gourds. Um, you get a stamp set and um, a spot, whoops, which I just threw on the floor. But then the inside of your box has this these lines. Can you see the lines there where you cut them out? and put them together with this black tape that they send you. I mean, I was even surprised by that. And it makes this little wheelbarrow. Now mine's a little rough around the edges, I'm not gonna lie, it's not perfect, but it's cute. So the good news is I have a bunch. I ordered a bunch of them. So if you didn't get one, if you didn't get this month's paper pumpkin, um, or you want an extra or whatever, I have them. Um, I have used two, I'm keeping two, but the rest I will be happy to sell. They're $25 shipped. That means it includes the shipping from me to you. And uh, please email me. Now, 
again, remember, I'm leaving town tomorrow. So if you email me and I don't respond right away, I'm not ignoring you. It's just going to take me a little bit longer. Um, and then once they're sold, they're sold. Um, I ordered a lot. Well, I mean, I think it's a lot. It's more than I normally order. We'll just say that, okay? Okay, so that's that. Um, I want to show you guys some cute stuff. Over the last two weeks, I've gotten a lot of cards. Um, I was going to show you this first while we waited for everybody to get on, but I didn't do it. Um, you guys are awesome. So sweet. Some of these are thank you cards. Some of them are um, birthday cards. Kelly Frank, thank you so much. My favorite cactus. Um, this one, now this is an interesting card. Funny enough, I actually made one of these cards. I forget what it's called. In next month's, see how it opens? In next month's Club Create. So this is from Donna. Donna, I love it. And it, we were on the same wavelength. Um, I like it in this uh, pattern. So thank you, Donna. Very cute. It has a little belly band. What is this? What is this fancy fold called? I think we may have already talked about this once. Somebody will know. I don't know what, what it's called. Oh, this card. This is a special card. This is from Shelly Gardner, our CEO, Stampin' Up. Um, it. She says, it's it, to congratulate me on my 1.1 million, but it's late because I'm almost to my 1.2. She sa even said, sorry, it's late. I don't care. It's late. It's beautiful. Look at that. It's You can't see how sparkly it is. It's very sparkly. Shelly's, this is very Shelly her style. Now this card is from Janice and look at this. Look, I don't know what this card is called, but it's cool. I've seen it, but I don't know how to make it. I need to learn and we need to make it. Do you see that? It's like an infinity card or something. I don't know, but very, very cool. Thank you, Janice. Love it. This one. Oh, this is that wild rose suite. Remember that? And that paper. God, I use the heck out of that paper. This is from Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. It's beautiful. Lots of lots of details. Embossing, um, d more embossing, corner punches, all kinds of stuff. Beautiful. This card uses um, our bird. I forget. I don't even remember um, what it was called, but this is from Marnie. And I love this card. So sweet. Your coloring is beautiful. Thank you, Marnie. This card is from... Oh, Mary Alice, and Mary Alice used that border die, see right there, that I have never used, and because I kept thinking, oh, I don't really know what to do with that die. Well, Mary Alice, you gave me an idea, because look, she put the DSP there, so you can see it behind the border. Very cute. Pinwheel card, is that what it's called? Tower card? All right, you guys have all kinds of names for them. Um, this one is very bright and beautiful from Gina. This Gina is on my team. So she not only just sent me a card, she sent me a present. And it is, look, do you remember this paper? Love it. And it's a little notepad holder. Um, and it's like, it's really, really nice. It has like a pocket. This is like professional. Like it feels like it came from the print shop. Gina, it's gorgeous. I love it. I got to figure out how to make this so that we can make it. I mean, it is, it is fancy. It is very fancy. Thank you, Gina. I appreciate it. All right, so lots of fun mail. Thank you, guys. I always say you guys are ridiculously thoughtful. Ridiculously thoughtful. That's a compliment. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to start clearing out the table. Here are the other paper pumpkins. Look, they're so cute. I haven't put the tags on them yet. God, they're cute. Very cute. That is, so you can't subscribe and get that, but you can buy one from me. I have extras. All right, reminder, Club Create for October is going to feature the Sweet Little Stockings. It is $39. It includes five projects and about $20 in product. Hey, there's Gina. Um, and the cutest dog cards you've ever seen in your whole life. Subscription. It's a subscription, which means you have to subscribe um, by October 7th. Um, and if you just want to do one month, you can cancel the subscription, but if you stay for six months, PayPal will continue to charge you every six, every month um, on the day that you sign up. So let's say you sign up on the 23rd, it'll charge you every month on the 23rd um, for the next kit. And um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, if you stay six months, I give you $25 product credit. Yay, it's fun. It's been really, it's getting bigger. It's almost getting to where I need to cap it. Fair warning, I may put a cap on Club Create because it's gotten crazy big. Um, oh, I know, okay, so, so 
celebration is almost over. Is it backwards? It's backwards. Mm, no, I'm not going to touch that because I'll probably mess it up. But anyway, you guys can read backwards, right? $99 free shipping. This is the celebration starter kit special. You get a free bundle, one of these in your starter kit. So you pick out $125 of product that you want from either catalog or the clearance rack. Then you also add on one of these and it's $99 free shipping, okay? It's always a good deal, but during celebration, you get to add on an extra bundle. We've talked about this every week, right? Pick the most expensive bundle. Um, so if you want to take advantage of this, you've got to do so by September 30th, which is next Thursday. This is the last Facebook Live where I will talk about it. You know, some of y'all are like, yes, good. <laughs> we don't want to hear you talk about it anymore. But I just don't want you guys to miss out on celebration. This is the only time we've ever had celebration in the summer, ever. Um, and, and I don't know if we'll have it again. So it's a, you know, like take advantage of it. This is free stuff. You get free stuff with every $50 you purchase. The starter kit, you get free stuff. Then, you know, when you buy the starter kit, you are a demonstrator. And you can be um, just a hobby demonstrator if you want, where, which means you're your only customer. Or maybe you and your friends are the only ones that order. And that's totally fine. Um, when you become a demonstrator, you still get those same perks. Um, you will get celebration items on every $50 you spend. You'll get stamp rewards after $150 you know, in a one order, um, but you also get a discount, 20%. Or you can also call that income. You know, if you sell a stamp set to somebody, um, they order from you, you make 20% off their order. It's a nice way to get the things that you want, I'm telling you. So anyways, that's that. That'll be the last time I tell you, get free stuff. And then you get to be part of my team, which I think is a pretty good deal. You get free PDFs every month, discounted class kits. It's a good deal. If you have questions about that, please email me. Um, I have all kinds of demonstrators on my team. I have those that we just talked about who are their only customer. I have some who occasionally sell to friends. I have some who occasionally hold classes. And I have some who are working their business hard, doing um, consistent events, all kinds. So, we run the gamut on my team and we are all over the United States. You don't have to be local to me. Um, we do a lot of things through Facebook. Um, so if you guys are interested, let me know. Okay. Now here's a sneak peek. Our, my Halloween class, did you guys see right there? Um, it's almost done being sorted. It's going to ship out on Tuesday. Um, that was a really hard class to prep. There was a, like a thousand die cuts in that class, but super cute. Anyway, um, that deadline has passed for the Halloween class. So my next class, I have it ready. I'm waiting for the PDF to be proofread and I'm going to list it next week. And it is so cute. Now, now I'm going to, I'm not, <laughs> I don't really know how to say that. Cloche, cloche, someone tell me. I meant to call my mom and ask her. In my mind, it's Cloche. It's a fancy word for a glass dome, right? So we have this bundle, right? And this is more like Christmas. And then we have this, this stamp set that coordinates. So the class will have three cards from this stamp set and four cards from this stamp set. And get ready, get ready. The shaker domes, look. You know, the domes, the shakers, they're shaker cards. So not all of them, about half cloche patients, cloche, oh, okay, see, I didn't know, I should have called my mom, cloche. Really, why does it have the end on the E? E on the end, I mean, <laughs> cloche. All right, well, glass dome class, that's what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, shaker cards and super cute. Um, I want to show you my favorite card. I mean, come on, look at those pies. So anyway, it's seven cards. Um, one, let's see, birthday, Christmas, all occasion, Christmas, all occasion, Christmas, Christmas. So mostly, <laughs> it's French. Okay, well, do the French not pronounce their E's at the end? 
I'm calling it because look, it has two names. Sweets and Treats and Classic Cloche. <laughs> so I'm calling it Sweet Cloche Class. That's a weird word. I don't like that name. I don't know, the Shaker Card Class. Let's call it that, the Shaker Card Class. Um, Christine, it's a class coming next week. Class coming next week. The class that Erica can't pronounce the name. That's what we'll call it. The cloche class. All right, prizes. Let's get on to prizes. Um, last week I picked two winners, um, or two weeks ago when I wasn't sick, um, to win these stamp sets and the ribbon. Each of you are going to get one. Heather Howard and Melanie McFarlane. I don't know if I have your mailing addresses. I don't think I do. Maybe I do. I don't know. Message me, okay? And I'll get them out for you next week. Thank you for sharing my video. Now, if you guys want to win, was that the right stamp set from last week? <laughs> I don't know. Was it the right one or was it this one? You guys tell me. Whichever one was for last week, y'all are going to get that one. Whichever wasn't last week, we'll get this one. I feel like this was this week. Or was this last week? Maybe this was last week. A lot of things have happened since then. I'll go back and rewatch my video. If you want to win a prize, one of those, just share the video, okay? Okay, I'm going to switch you guys around. Facebook Live, I can already tell. It's going to be bonkers. So just get ready for me to be dumb and make stupid mistakes. All right? I think you guys like it most when I'm dumb. Because <laughs> then you get to laugh. Um, okay, welcome to Facebook Friday on Thursday. If you've never joined me before, I pick um, a bundle or a stamp set usually, and we make three projects. This week it is um, Pretty Pumpkins. I am obsessed with pumpkins. That's one of the things. I'm obsessed with gingham, right, and pumpkins. Those are two of my favorite things. Um, so, of course, you knew, you know I'm going to be gravitating to this stamp set right away. So over at pinkbuggeroo.com, it should have uploaded. Um, there's a, under the last photo, there's a little thing you can click on and it'll give you this PDF. It has all the measurements and the supplies that I'm using today. Okay. And then if you like the make and takes, I cut packets every week for the make and takes and I send them to everybody who spends $35 or more by Monday at midnight. Here's the host code for this week. Um, new host code you have until Monday at midnight. $35 is the minimum, but if you want a celebration item and my free all-star tutorial bundle, bump your order to $50, okay? And this is what they look like. You will need the bundle. You will need the dies and the stamp set. Everything else I will have scored. Um, I don't know if we have any die cuts this week. Other than, I will die cut things other than what's in that pumpkin die. A big truck just pulled up that's full of workers. Of course, they saw I was going live and they said it's time to turn on the big giant machine. Oh wait, they're driving away, maybe not. Anyhow, this is what they look like. I do not do any stamping, that's a thank you tag. Um, if you wanna do the stamping, you have to do it yourself. That's a stamping up rule. That is like, that is like the number one rule of stamping up. Stamping up demonstrators cannot stamp for you. All right. So that's that. Let me tape this down and we will get started. Um, so, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. So tomorrow, my husband and I are going up to Waco where my daughter is. It's in school. She's got parents weekend. Feels like we just dropped her off and we're already going back for parents weekend. We're very excited. So that's why we're not having Facebook Live tomorrow. Um, I appreciate y'all's flexibility and showing up today. All right, so hopefully you guys saw the these yesterday on my blog. Inside are the little spin wheel, um, pecan spin wheels. Apparently they're not new and they're not seasonal. Um, they're from Little Debbie, of course. Um, I got them, I had my groceries delivered last week um, and I had ordered some Little Debbie snacks some pumpkin ones, and these were in there by mistake. And I felt like, well, since I got them for free, I should use them for something. <laughs> um, so that's where those came from. Um, okay, now let's get started. Our first project, we're gonna color um, the pumpkins on craft. 
Um, Laura, you're in Waco this weekend too. Do you have a someone at Baylor or do you live there? Um, yes, we are going to the game. My daughter's running in the Baylor line this weekend. This is her weekend. She's got a gold cowboy hat <laughs> with a gold tiara. I don't know. She's crazy. She's having way more fun than I ever even considered having in college. <laughs> um, that's so funny. Small world. Um, anyway, um, now I'm reading comments and I'm distracted. Um, when, where do you, I get the clear bags that the cards are in? Um, Randy, if you go to my blog at the top, there's an Amazon tab, click on that Amazon tab. And I have those in there linked because people have asked me about those before. They're really good. Okay. I'm not going to read comments anymore. Um, I mean, I will in a little while, but not right now. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Stampin' Blends. Notice how like muted and rustic that looks. That's because we've stamped it on craft. Compare that to basic white. Both are beautiful. They're very different, right? Um, I love to, to use Stampin' Blends on cardstock that isn't white. So um, when I started messing around with this bundle, I thought that would be really um, pretty. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So let's do, let's do, where's my craft piece? Let's do our stamping and coloring first, okay? Um, how far away? I need to turn the fan off. Hold on. All right. So craft, we have craft paper. We had craft paper many years ago and it was 12 by 12. And now we have craft paper in the holiday catalog that is six by six. And mine has come like this. I don't know if you guys have ordered your craft paper. <laughs> if it's been curled. I don't know why it's like that. And even if I set something heavy on it, it is still curled. But anyway, who cares? It does. It still works. It's fine. No problem. Just go with it, right? All right, so we're going to stamp these in memento. And this is like the little vine um, with um, the little pumpkin, you know, um, um, blossoms. And here are the colors that we're going to use. Okay, so pale papaya. Now, light pumpkin pie and light pale or pale papaya look very similar. So you have to look. Look at that. That's very close. This is dark pale papaya and light pale papaya. So we're going to use that. Also known as peekaboo peach. Not really. <laughs> um, pumpkin pie, of course. And then Cajun craze. Um, now, a lot of times when... I color with Stampin' Blends. You'll see me do a lot of blending. But on your craft paper, it really kind of takes the ink and does something different to it. Uh, it kind of spreads out. I don't know how to really explain it, um, but it's really neat. Okay, let me make sure I get the right one. Um, so I'm gonna, so that was light pale papaya, which actually, it doesn't look like it was. That was actually not. Okay, okay, hold on, we can change. That was, see, they're so similar. Light pumpkin pie, okay? That's what I did there. So I'm gonna take dark pumpkin pie and just kind of trace those lines that are there. And I'm gonna add a little bit of dark on the bottom. And I'm not gonna blend that in like I normally would. I normally would take that light and blend that in. But I'm not gonna do that this time because it just kind of all bleeds together, if that's the right word on the craft and it's really nice. It blends nicely. All right, so now we'll do pale papaya. Do you guys, here's a question for all of you. Where you live, do you have pumpkin patches where you can go and buy the pumpkins off the vine? Um, we do, uh, here, I don't think we have them like that. We have pumpkin patches where people bring in pumpkins um, when I was a teacher, when I taught kindergarten, we would always go, I don't, didn't mean to do that, but oh well, um, we would always take the kids to the pumpkin patch. The churches have pumpkin patches. Um, but when I lived in Georgia, okay, I'm switching now to Cajun craze. When I, um, lived in Georgia, we, and I was teaching there too, we went on a field trip to a pumpkin patch and it was a real pumpkin patch. Where the pumpkins were growing on the vine and I loved it it was fun so I like that this stamp set has the little vine images you know so that it's kind of more realistic like it's in that pumpkin patch 
Now, Cajun Craze is a controversial color. Many of you hate Cajun Craze. I will use that word hate because I know somebody who hates Cajun Craze. Now, I like Cajun Craze for fall. It is a good kind of a burnt orange color. Um, it almost looks reddish there, a little bit reddish. But it's perfect for pumpkins and fall leaves. All right, now I'm gonna take just um, light old olive and color in those leaves. Now, if you don't like this muted um, look, that's totally fine. You just stamp it on white or vanilla. I like vanilla cardstock with these fall things, um, which is what I'm, we're gonna use here on this next card. Actually, both cards use very vanilla. I. I always use um that is not a leaf that looks like a leaf I can't tell I stamped it upside down is that I think that's it. we're gonna make it a leaf I don't know I can't tell um I always use basic white always unless the designer series paper that I'm using has a vanilla base um and then I use vanilla but when I'm using things like fall or kind of a rustic -y, outdoorsy something I like to use vanilla all right so I had a little bit of lines to that and now I'm gonna take let's use let's use mm, mm, let's use light pumpkin pie on the little blossoms you like Cajun craze good I do too you know every time Stampin' Up! has a color refresh people do a lot of talking about what colors they want to see gone. And I see people saying, ah, let's get rid of Cajun craze. I'm like, no. What was that yellow? We've talked about that yellow that, that we got rid of a few years ago that was a great fall yellow. Now I can't remember what it was. I can never remember. It's kind of like Bumblebee. I don't remember. Okay, before we bring the cut and emboss machine over, let's stamp our sentiment. And we need the early espresso ink pad, which is over here. Um, the words, I meant to tell you the words. My shirt keeps getting stuck on the edge of this table. I'll move it over a little bit. Um, this, threw it together. We've used this before for Facebook Friday. I love this set. I, sometimes you just need little skinny words. Um, I felt like if I use those two, the words that are in this, this stamp set, it covered up the, the pumpkins too much. So I got this little one right here, forever grateful. And so I've stamped it, I'm going to stamp it in early espresso on very vanilla, okay? The other thing that we're gonna do is use the stitched greenery die. Did you guys notice that detail in there? We've used that on a Facebook Live before and I really feel like it's, overlooked in the annual catalog because this is all it's just one die um, and it'll put this stitching on your card front it's big enough for a card front or like we're going to do right now let me move all this out of the way um on a you know a piece of cardstock i was thinking yesterday when i was doing the clean recordings of this which you will find on youtube if you come back to watch and you want to just skip through all the chit chat you can find the clean recordings on youtube I was thinking what would be nice, and maybe I'll do this more in the spring when we're using lots of flowers, is if you cut it and then cut a shape out of it. I don't know. I just, I don't, for some reason that popped in my mind. So that's gonna, I'm gonna tuck that one away for later. All right, let's look at it. Very nice, very nice indeed. All right, so now because my craft paper is curled. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, where's my post-it tape? Oh, here it is, it's hiding. We're going to get those dies and we're gonna put these on here. I'm gonna use some post-it tape to hold them in place because this um, piece of paper is just curled up and I'm afraid. Oh, hello. Hello, no one told me. I forgot to color the stems. 
I don't know, maybe you did, but I quit reading comments so that I could, so that I could not make mistakes. <laughs> See how well that's, that's working for me? All right, we gotta color the stems. Hello. Um, soft suede. And if you're brave enough, you can put a little bit of color on those viney things. Um, you don't really have to. I mean, they're so skinny. But you can add a little bit of color to those if you want. Okay, now. Now we are ready. Let's put this down right here. So, back to my complaining about this AT&T thing out here. I know you guys said you'll love it, whatever. Well, if they blow up my house... <laughs> I'm not going to love it. My friend Kay told me today that in her neighborhood, a house blew up because they ruptured a gas line. Um, that freaked me out because we've had a gas line ruptured here during this process twice. They've had to evacuate houses twice. Um, so that freaked me out a little bit. I think I'm going to have to cut these at two different times because I put them too close together. So let's do that. So those of you who've had this fiber, whatever, put in your neighborhood, did things like that happen? I mean, they have been a nightmare. They're not like even being nice and telling you, like knocking on your door, hey, we're getting ready to, to drill a giant hole in your driveway. They just start doing it. It's bizarre. It, and because it's the easement, you know, the, apparently the first however many feet of your yard is called an easement, which they have legally the right to do whatever they want. It's, it's weird. It is weird. And my internet's just fine. <laughs> I don't, I mean, it is right now. I don't know. Ugh, weird. Pineapple punch, Nikki. What did I say? Pineapple punch? Oh, no, that's the one you're thinking of. No, no. Oh, I loved Pineapple Punch. No, there was a yellow years ago that was not an in color. Um, it was a core, one of our core colors. Um, and it was like, a, uh, what was it? I don't know. I can't remember. Somebody will say it and then maybe I'll remember. Somebody may have already said it because I asked. Um, more mustard. That's it, Jean. More mustard. Yep. Do you, who remembers more mustard? It just sounds like a gross color, doesn't it? But it was, I loved it. It it was good. It was a very good fall color. Okay, the message die going on to, oh, I think it's straight. We shall see. Um, More mustard was a good one. I think, well, who knows? Bumblebee is a really good fall yellow as well. Oh, good. It was perfectly straight. Let's see. See? Perfectly straight. Okay, we're ready to put our card together. Let's get all of our pieces, make sure I'm not losing my dies. Um, oh, oh, I have a crumb cake card base and I have a piece of old olive that is three and three fourths by five. And we're gonna put this on the card front kind of wonky, right? See how it's kind of like tilted? And then we'll get our beautifully embossed you know, did I put that on the supply list? Has anybody looked yet? Oh, it's right here. I don't remember typing that. Of course, I did type this last week. Stitched greenery dye. I did. I did. It's on there. How much is it? $22. It's, it's really worth it. And then I'm going to do this one wonky the other way. Okay? That's an official term, wonky. Now, I have cut out a very vanilla seasonal label. These are the seasonal label dies from the holiday catalog. And remember, you guys, as I'm like shouting things out and then I don't complete my sentences because I start talking about something else, all of this is listed on that free supply sheet for you over on my blog, pinkbuckery.com. I will update the link here when I'm done. At the top, I'll add all the links. I've cut a couple of pieces of designer series paper this one is Mossy Meadow from, no, no, this one is Mossy Meadow from the um, Neutrals the paper pack. And this one is Cajun Craze from the Regals. Okay. I'm worried about having enough Cajun Craze paper for make and takes because we're going to use it in the third project too, or the, the card. 
All right, so then I made a little Rick Rack cinnamon cider Rick Rack. I'm gonna cut it a little bit shorter and put a little bit of adhesive on there like that. We'll make that a little wonky. And then we'll get our pumpkins. And hi, Wendy, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, I put the dimensionals in the middle because then I want to get these other pieces and I'm gonna slide them behind. I didn't really know exactly where I wanted to put them until I have this here. So you can just slide that back like that, okay? And then we'll get this one. And we'll put this one, oh, is that not straight? What happened? There we go. Mm. It's because it's, everything's wonky, I can't tell. All right, and then that one will go right there. Now, of course, we have to put a bow, right, on our pumpkin. You can use linen thread or our twine, basic um, twine essential pack that has all those colors snip snip oh you know what i dropped my glue dots behind the table yesterday hold on i'll get another pack i did not pull them out i dropped two things back there yesterday while filming videos and i forgot to get them out all right a little bow whoa Put that right there and then get our skinny little sentiment we're gonna have to use um many dimensionals thank you Lori. i like this card too so now you've got a grateful card that's perfect for fall but you could change the sentiment remember you guys look at all your stamps find a sentiment that you like that fits whatever the occasion is that you need for your card last thing we're going to do is add some champagne rhinestones Champagne rhinestones, I feel like, go with this. Oh, come on. Let me get a little more putty out. I feel like champagne rhinestones go really well here. Um, with, no, that doesn't go there. Let's do, let's do one. What the heck? What the heck? Hold, please. Hold, please. I need the Jeopardy music. Okay, there. Now, let's get that again. No, where's I gonna put it? Mm. Oh my gosh, my, okay. You know what? This one's going in the trash because I don't know what's happening to that one. It obviously did not want to be part of my card. Let's put one right there. And then they say to do in odd numbers, right? There we go. God, this putty is like not doing what it's supposed to do. Ta-da! There we go. What do you guys think? Pretty, right? Pretty. And if you don't like the muted, then just stamp your, um, uh oh, stamp your pumpkins on very vanilla cardstock. And there you have it. Look, now I have three. All right, so that's project number one. Let me clear off my space and we will get to the 3D project. Got lots of things here. All kinds of trash. The trash can is always full. Let's see, I don't want to throw my post-it tape away. All right, thanks guys. Thank you very much. All right, so next is a treat box. We are gonna make, of course, a treat box. Um, and this is what I ordered from in the groceries. <laughs> And they sent me the extras. But they, luckily they sent me what I asked for too. Um, pumpkin spice rolls. I use these every year. These are really yummy. Um, and again, how much? $2.19 for six of them, right? So they're really cheap. Um, and it makes a pretty significant sized treat. Now this box is a little bit different. I did something similar to what we did last, well, two weeks ago on that squirrel box. I'm gonna show you where I rounded the edges of the box. So it's a little, it's a little more stepped up than normal. All right, let's do our box first. And here's Cajun Craze. I hope that you guys are on board with Cajun Craze because I love Cajun Craze. If you don't like Cajun Craze, just change it. 
just use a different color. Okay, let's look at notes. Let's everybody cross your fingers that I um, typed them in correctly this week. <laughs> Eight and a half by nine and a half Cajun craze. Let's move these out of the way. And on the short side, oh, it says on the shirt side. I thought I fixed that. I saw it when I typed it. On the shirt side, um, we're going to score it at one and a fourth, two and a half, four and a half, five and three fourths, seven and three fourths. Okay. Then also, here, I want you to remember something. As we're gonna do a whole lot of cutting. I'm gonna keep referring to this end right here. This is the three-fourths of an inch tab that tucks into the box, okay? So when we start cutting, make sure you remember where that is. Now the long side has even more measurements. One and a fourth, two and a half, seven, and eight. Is that right? No, that's not right. Hold, hold on. Hold on, hold, hold please. That's like seven and eight and a fourth. Uh, eight and a fourth, I did mess up this week. All right, I think I can just pretend like that, that line is not there. I should just start over, shouldn't I? Okay, hold on. Hold please. <laughs> I hope you didn't print the, the PDF out. You know, I double checked it and I double checked it. I did it. I missed a typo. What size what did we say? Eight and a half by nine and a half. I was certain that I fixed that typo and that the measurements were correct. Okay, let's go to the shirt side again. <laughs> the shirt side. One and a fourth, two and a half, four and a half, five and three fourths, seven and three fourths. There's that three fourths of an inch edge, don't forget. Then it's one and a fourth, two and a half, seven, and eight and a fourth. Okay? Eight and a fourth. So if you printed it, just write in a fourth. I forgot the fourth. Okay, now, first thing we're gonna do is burnish all those lines with your bone folder. And then we're gonna do a whole lot of cutting. I painted some furniture, well, well, I guess not really furniture. My husband made, so my daughter and her roommate, their beds in the dorm are lofted. And when she moved in, I was like, mm, do you need like some stairs? No, no, I can climb. It's fine. Climb the end of the bed. Well, within like two days, she was like, the bed is awful. I need those stairs. So my husband built some stairs for her and I painted them. And now I have all this black <laughs> paint under my nails. Don't you hate that? Because it does not come out. All right, where are my pretty scissors? Here they are. Now, remember, there's that three-fourths of an inch edge. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and we're going to do Tetris again, these three, all right? So this one, and you can actually cut all the way in, but only cut off the three. Oh, I did a terrible job of that. There we go. Now, cut this one off, and when you do that, put this, cut this at an angle, okay? Now, do the same thing over here. The Tetris corner, cut those off, and cut that at an angle, and cut that one off, okay? So here's what we have so far, nothing terribly complicated. Now, take your scissors and cut these lines right here, and these lines right here, and we're gonna cut off this outer one, and we're gonna cut off, hold on. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna cut off these three also. I had to think about it, I had to visualize it. So cut off these three. Tetris corners again. And these are legit Tetris corners because they're squares, okay? So do you see how that looks? Now, if you're gonna come back and make this box, go to YouTube, find my clean recording. I'm trimming that because it's not straight. Find my clean recording of this because I explain it really well. <laughs> during that recording and I don't mess up the measurements. Um, but I also, you can pause it to look at the paper. That's what I do, you know, when I'm watching a video, I pause it um, to look to see what their paper looks like. All right, so I did the exact same thing over here on this side. Now, we just wanna cut off all those corners, 
on every single tab. Just cut them off, okay? Snip, snip, all the way around. This box is going to have rounded edges on three sides. That fourth side is going to have um, the lid to the box coming up. So it won't, obviously it won't have a rounded edge. Um, you know, I went, it's funny, I went back to a really old tutorial of mine for this cake box. And I mean, it's old, maybe almost 10 years old. And I could not understand my own instructions. They didn't make sense. So hopefully my instructions have improved in 10 years. So I had to pretty much <laughs> figure it out again. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do, remember, here's that three quarters of an inch tab right here. We wanna make these two tabs look just like that tab. So I'm just gonna cut them in half. Remember, those are the ones we're gonna tuck into our box. Okay, so now if you watch the recording, pause the video and copy, cut your paper like that. Okay, there's your template. This is a three quarter of an inch edge. Okay, now moving on. The designer series paper that I am using for this box is the Wildcat paper from the annual catalog. In the Wild is what it's called. And look at that, it's Cajun craze. Perfect. It's not designed for a pumpkin box, but it works perfectly. All right, so we're gonna put that right there. Um, I'm gonna go rogue today, and I'm not gonna use liquid adhesive. I'm gonna use stamp and seal, all right? Now, I put it on those four corners right there. You, If you're gonna give this to somebody, you probably wanna use a more appropriate adhesive, like liquid glue, tear and tape, or our seal plus but you know for the video we're just gonna go with it like that all right so I folded those in see how that now has a tab out and this one's gonna do the same thing okay like that so this is what your box looks like now just put some adhesive on each of these tabs this is this is really where I should be using the appropriate because I can't get my <laughs> tape runner to run with no backing. All right, now just fold those down like that. All right, so there's your box. It's a little bit fancier. It doesn't have any rough edges except for those tabs and they fold down into it like that. Pretty cool, huh? All right, and look, a perfect fit. A perfect fit. Okay, now let's make the, the top. The, the box is a little complicated, so I kept the top pretty. Well, there's some fussy cutting, so maybe it's not that simple. Um, we're gonna stamp this. I love this stamp, this pumpkin with the leaves in it. Well, that is the wrong color. That's why that looks like that. Let's try that again. We're gonna do it in pumpkin pie. I've got scrap paper here. I'm just gonna wipe that off because I don't have my jammy. Pumpkin pie on pale papaya. That looks much better. Um, so let's bring over our cut and emboss machine again. Um, one thing that I have not said about these dies, um, so the stamp set in itself is really neat because it has that pumpkin that is growing in the pumpkin patch, basically. You know, it's got the vines, got the leaves, and then it, so then the dies have the matching dies and then this one there's this pumpkin and it has this matching die but then the die set has these other pumpkins that aren't meant to go with the stamp and they're beautiful um so you have like lots of options with this with this um bundle we're going to use those next all right move that out of the way let me clean up my mess okay move this hey oh by the way you guys Next week, I've got Halloween projects for you that are to die for. I, you know, sometimes I make projects and I like them. Sometimes I make projects and I'm like, oh my God, I have to take a picture of this right now and text it to my friend because it's so cute. And these projects, one of them especially, was like that. So make sure if you like Halloween treats, you are here next Friday for Facebook Friday. All right. Isn't that a beautiful script? If friends were pumpkins, I'd pick you. Now, this font, this um, sentiment, the saying, 
I had a really hard time finding a die for it, you know, to fit in because this goes way down and this goes way up. So what I decided is that since I didn't have the right die, I would just cut it into the shape that I wanted. So I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna outline it. And then I'm gonna cut along my pencil line. This is called fussy cutting. And I learned the pencil trick from my friend Melanie. She is amazing. She, um, her fussy cutting looks like a machine did it. And on one of her um, videos, she showed that that's how she does it. She just takes her pencil and draws a line. And it really makes a huge difference because you're not guessing where you're cutting. Um, you know, when you're trying to, to do fussy cutting and you're just like guessing as you go, you're more likely to make a mistake. But if you are, if you have a line to follow, you're, you're not gonna, you know, cut in too shallow or too deep or whatever because you've already drawn it with your pencil. And if you made that mistake, when you drew the line, you can just erase it. It's not permanent. So it really does make a difference. All right, so just follow along that line. And if you end up having pencil line on your sentiment, just get your pencil eraser <laughs> and erase like the old days when you were in school. Um, now I'm going a little off, off the line here. I'm gonna regret it. Cut off that extra cardstock as you go. That's gonna help. Go around the lines. Just go slowly. Now here's the other idea that I had. If you are like, Erica, I'm not doing that. That's too much, that's too much work. You could find another sentiment that is small like we did in the first project. You could, oh, I forgot to cut out the leaf. Let's do that real quick. You could stamp it and just cut a rectangle around it. Maybe you have a die that works better. Or another thing I thought of is you could cut a piece of very vanilla that is um, the same size as the lid and stamp the sentiment, sentiment in the middle and put that on the inside of the box. So when they open the box, they would see the beautiful words. There's always ways to adapt. All right, so I've got a piece of our cork paper. I'm gonna put that right here. And I'm gonna get my dimensionals. Oh, it freaked me out, I forgot I made a mistake on the back. And let's put it on the left side like that. We will put a little bit of a glue, a little bit of glue right there for our leaf. Okay, and then we will get a dimensional for our fussy cutting, beautiful words, and put them right there. And then again, yes, let's add a bow because I can't make a pumpkin without a bow. <laughs> Catherine says, work's getting in the way of her fun. Yeah, I know. Don't you hate that? Ugh. I know. There was something I wanted to do this morning that was fun work. It's part of work, but it was like the fun part of work. But I had to make myself do all the, the not so much fun stuff, like typing a blog post <laughs> before I would let myself do that. Ugh. There we go. All right. And there you have it. A nice little pumpkin spice box from eight or nine years ago that is updated with better measurements. I hope you guys like it. The, I think the top's pretty easy. I think the box is easy after you've done it and you see what you're doing. All right, we're almost to the end. What time is it? Oh, I am not running as late as I thought I would. All right, let me clean up. And then we're gonna make one more card really using those dies. Those detailed pumpkin dies, that's what they're called. All right, let's see, do we need, yeah, we're gonna need this, let me move that. Do, 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 da, da, da. Last tray over here, it doesn't have a whole lot of stuff on it. I think this is my favorite of all of them. I think it is. I mean, it's a stitched scallop, dark on light, and it's just really cute. So the only stamp we're doing is the sentiment. We're going to take those beautiful dies and 
we are going to cut them out. Um, I am using the um, Blackberry Beauty, is that what it's called? Blackberry Beauty Designer Series Paper, and that same Cajun Craze Designer Series Paper from the Regal Stack. That's why I said, I hope I have enough Cajun Craze um, cardstock or Designer Series Paper for all of our Make It Takes. I may have to order some more. Now, when I first looked at this pumpkin, I thought, wow, that's beautiful, but what the heck am I going to do with that? I mean, whoa, that's very intricate. Um, so that's why I decided we're going to back it on the paper. Um, also, you don't have to. If you want to just cut it out um, and stick it on like the rectangle, you could. Uh, the thing I was mostly concerned about was gluing. <laughs> There is no way that I could glue that without making a giant mess. So we are going to use our adhesive sheets. All right, we're going to cut this one out of that. Um, and then we needed two um, leaves from the Mossy Meadow. Okay, so looks like my Cajun Craze. Boy, I really cut it short, didn't I? Look like it's going to barely, whoa, barely fit. All right, but... First, we must turn it into a sticker. These are our adhesive sheets. They come six by 12. They are a lifesaver. Add them onto your next order. You will not be sorry. Lay your paper down on that. And I'm gonna cut it off of this adhesive sheet so that I don't waste any of my adhesive sheets. Okay. And we'll bring over the cut and emboss machine and we will get it all cut out. Let's see if I can get this in here without it slipping off. Because if it slips off any tiny bit, that's going to be a problem. All right, we'll cut this one. And let's see if I can get these out over here. Thanks, Lisa. I appreciate it. So sometimes... You know, I have an idea in my head and it comes out and I'm like, oh, okay, that, that's beautiful. And then sometimes I have an idea in my head and I'm like, oh, that did not, that did not work. <laughs> this one worked. All right. So I'm going to, I know that these are going to cut fine, right? So let's get these out of here. Those cut perfectly. This is going to cut perfectly. That's the magic trick to get your dies out. Um... But this one, we've got to make sure that it cut all the way through. All of that is a cutting surface. See how it's not real defined here in the middle? I, I'm worried that it didn't cut all the way through, so I'm going to set it down upside down. And you can start out upside down if you want. Let's, fingers crossed it didn't slip. Nope, look at that. Now it's much more defined, right? So let's get our foam pad and our this is the die brush on my take your pick tool and we can get all of those little doodads out when you have adhesive sometimes it's harder to get those out but they will come out when you peel the adhesive off okay isn't that beautiful so now before oh no you know what we're going to do we're going to stick it to this designer series paper so Peel this off, and as you go, you can make sure that those little extra Klingons, the doodads, look, they're just sticking to that, and they're coming right off. There it is. Oh, be very careful, because it's very delicate. And set that down on your paper. Okay, now it's a sticker. No adhesive, no mess. And then just get your scissors and cut all the way around. Easy, this is easy. I don't consider this fussy cutting because you're just, you've got your scissors bumped up against that die, no problem. You may have to have put your glasses on. <laughs> there we go. Isn't that pretty? Now think about the color options. It doesn't have to be what I did. Um, I was thinking a white pumpkin would be really pretty if you did um, like vanilla on vanilla, you know, where both layers were vanilla or white. That would be really pretty. I'm going to stamp this So Thankful For You in Early Espresso in the top corner of a stitched rectangle. 
And then we're just going to layer it all up with dimensionals, of course. Of course. Thanks, Carol, for sharing the video. I appreciate it. And we're going to put this one there. They're kind of hanging off the side a little bit. And then this one needs many dimensionals. They were right here. Probably on the last tray. No. Where did they go? I wonder. Oh, here they are. Okay. My husband, I, my car is not that old. Okay. It's a 2018 and it doesn't have Apple CarPlay. And when we rent cars, like when we go places and it has Apple CarPlay, I get mad. I'm like, why doesn't my car have Apple CarPlay? It's not even an old car. So my husband had this guy come out and install Apple CarPlay on my car today. And <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. Um, it, it was a little sketchy. Um, the guy was real nice, but um, he was very young. And when he was showing me how it worked, he was confused. <laughs> So that's going to be interesting to see how that works out. Why a 2018 car wouldn't put that in, I'm not sure, but whatever. I, I want to be able to see my, you know, apps. Do you guys, any of you have that on your car? Um, every time we go rent a car somewhere, it has it on there. And I'm like, God, I want that. You know, the text will pop up. You can see what it is. You can dismiss it. So you're not like looking at your phone. Um... But if it doesn't work right, it's going to be even more distracting. We'll see. I mean, I'm very thankful. It's what I wanted for my birthday. But I want it to work right, too. <laughs> okay, so I layered that on a very vanilla scalloped, um, what, contour scalloped die rectangle. Yeah, I know, Wendy. Um good luck with my music. I know we'll see because part of the, he said, Oh, it's touch screen on the Apple music when you have that up. But if you go back to the old, you know, like your XM radio or FM radio, then you have to use the dial. Now it's not, it's not touch screen anymore. And I was like, say what? <laughs> I'm sorry. You took away the touch screen. <sighs> I don't know. We'll see. I kind of was like, Oh, what did I ask for? Anytime you make, you know, technology changes to a car it's never quite the same okay dimensionals early espresso card base so it really pops out and last but not least we're going to put a piece of very vanilla on the inside so you can write your message tell this person why you're grateful i'll give it to my husband and tell him i'm grateful that he got apple carplay in my car <laughs> there you go what do you guys think i love this one i think this is my favorite now in case you were unaware, I have a lot of pretty pumpkin projects. So this, th these are the three we made today, right? These are the three that you will get in your make and takes. If you put in an order by Monday at midnight, you'll get both card make and takes and the box. You'll need the stamps and the dies, of course, ink and adhesive, right? Now there are other projects over on my blog. There's this one that was yesterday. There's a video tutorial for that. Um, there is also, um, early in the week on Monday or Tuesday, I posted this card and I want to point out that these are the grapevine dies. Have you seen those in the annual catalog? I saw them and I was like, that looks like a pumpkin vine. So I made the pumpkin vine for that. Um, this one also I want you to see, I paper pieced it, which means I stamped it. I stamped the image on pale papaya on pumpkin pie, on Cajun craze, on old olive, and on soft suede. And then I fussy cut those out. Okay, I cut them out with my scissors. And then I also stamped it on very vanilla. So I would cut, I cut out that pumpkin, glued it on, cut out that pumpkin, glued it on, and so on. All right, so that's called paper piecing. That's another way to color your pumpkins. Um, and then I showed this card way back when the catalog first came out, but I'm going to repost it on Monday because it's a really good one. I think when we, in August, we weren't ready for pumpkins. So I'm going to repost it on Monday. I love this one. See, I used that pumpkin and I embossed in the back, the black, and this is embossed too. You know, you can emboss any of your colored inks by stamping a Versamark first and then stamping colored ink and then on your cardstock. And then you can sprinkle your clear embossing powder and it'll be embossed in that color. So Versamark, then color, 
and then your paper, and then clear embossing powder. So that's, I mean, you probably can't really tell, but it is shiny. Okay, you guys, that's it for this week. We made it. The machine is still sitting there. It's not on. No dogs barked. I mean, I can't believe I got lucky because it is crazy chaos in the cul-de-sac. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Remember, I'll be back next Friday with Halloween projects. Um, I'm hoping to do Halloween treats two weeks in a row. Next week, um, we're using the Frightfully Cute. Is that what it's called? Frightfully Cute, the one with the little witch. And um, the owl, we're using that one. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to show you guys what I have come up with for that. So that'll be next Friday. And then the following Friday after that, maybe that little cat, what's it called? The clever cat? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Don't hold me to it. I don't know. We'll see. All right. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Don't forget to get your orders in by Monday at midnight. Um, I will update this post here with all the links that you need um, as soon as I'm done. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Bye.